Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining today. This is your host Nino, about to spoil you, for it has been the viewer's demand that I demonstrate how to browse the net somehow via the book 8088, but using an iPhone. Now that's a tricky demand, in so far as the book 8088 version 2's main communication facility is a COM1 port that you can see behind here, as this is really a modern DOS computer with 640 kilobytes of RAM, an ancient processor and so on and so forth, and it does have a serial communications port in its version 2. And the other device being the iPhone, the iPhone being the iPhone really, as always, is entirely inept to use serial devices. There seem to be some theoretical possibility if you register somewhere, etc., etc. You're just going to become a pensionist before you get online that way. And for all practical intents and purposes, an iPhone cannot work with something like this, which is a DB9 to serial port adapter. If you want a little demo, here we go. I'm just gonna plug this in, right? And anticlimactically, but expectably so, it's doing absolutely nothing. So unfortunately, that we cannot use. And therefore we need to somehow get from here to here, not via serial port. And that is where a little ESP32 board, let me disconnect it from behind, comes into play. So that is a little microcontroller, which the moment I turn over here, the battery clip will be switched on. And this microcontroller can communicate via serial, but being an ESP32, it can also communicate via wireless. And what this board will really do is it will take all the serial Con con signals from the book 8088 and turn them into wireless chatter with the iPhone. It is going to be trying to visit the iPhone at port 8088 and if there is some sort of listener there which is going to present it with some form of environment or interaction facility it is just going to be interacting with that facility and you will be seeing the results on your DOS machine's screen. So that is the book 8088 side of affairs. Let me just connect it again. So here you see things better, I hope. You just plug it in, that's it. That's all there is to it. The ESP32 board is connected to a max 232 voltage shifter for the serial port, so it's changing the TTL voltage, 3 to 5 volt on this board to the 9 or 12 volt or something which the serial port is expecting in order to not fry that board. But other than that, it's just a standard ESP32 board. As to the terminal environment we will be using here, we will be using something called Connex. I love Connex. I really tried to use Windows default terminal. It was problem after problem after problem. It was hanging half the time sometimes not noticing the serial port at all. I don't know what the issue was. I don't care. Connex works. So it's not a hardware issue. It's a software issue. I do not care to venture into. I just need to go to its directory and Connex really looks like this. And if I press Alt I, I can configure it. Configuration is just happening with the arrow keys and enter and escape. So if I wanted to change the port, I could do something speed. I could press the arrows to decrease or increase the speed, enter in the end when I'm satisfied. All super easy. You exit it with F10 and you can change whether you want to hang up or just exit. And that's going to be an important differentiation later on in the series. So here we are ready to talk, but whom are we going to be talking to? And here in the settings, you are having the opportunity to trigger a personal hotspot. Now I shall be doing that off camera because I don't want to present my password to the internet, but that is the settings that you will be needing. So you will be allowing others to join and you will be maximizing compatibility. 
and you may have to restart this a couple of times as I'm just going to do now before the iPhone is really delivering it to the ESP board. The connection to the iPhone seems to be extremely capricious and sometimes I have had the necessity to restart the hotspot four or five times before the two would connect but when they finally did things continued from there pretty easy. Maybe I should also mention on the iPhone what environment we will be visiting. So there is this thing called the ish shell. Yeah, this. This is really just a variant of emulated Alpine. You can see it here freshly started. But if I say you name A, then you see that it presents itself as an i686 Linux, that is Pentium 2 class. In other words, this is not a fragment of the general iOS environment that is presented to you the way Thermox does things on Android, but this is really just an emulated Linux on which you really happen to be root. <laughs> so you're king of a or queen of an emulated world. And this apk add, which it is telling to you, you will need to apk add at least a couple of things. You need something called busybox. You need something called busybox-extras. And finally, you will need a browser. Your options here really are links and links. <laughs> okay, so these are the things you need. I'll press enter. Nothing will happen as I have these already, but that is exactly the command that you would be executing. Once you have done so, Lynx is going to be deliver, uh, not Lynx, but Busybox Extras is going to be delivering you a so-called Telnet server, which is a remote command line environment, which is going to be listening on port 8088. So that is the same port to which this ESP32 board will be connecting. And it will then be presenting, this is a little L for login program, a bash shell. There will be no login. It will be just you connect to the port, boom, shell. Okay? We do that. Now, that was the theory. It will be now more interesting to see things in practice. I'm now going to switch on our Wi Fi to serial bridge. You see, setup commencing. And I expect it to start to whine connecting to Wi-Fi, but it can't connect because our dear iPhone is not right immediately in the hotspot settings. And when it isn't, you just can't connect. Okay, finally it did connect. And so we are now facing the situation of it does see my phone but there's nobody there. So the two are connected, as you can see up here on the Apple iPhones symbol, but there's no environment yet. So that's why we need ish. And now as I press here, enter, the Telnet environment will start and you will see it logging in. Localhost, here we are. And if I now say LS, then everything is fine. If I say Cal for calendar, hop, we're getting everything. And now we can therefore command the Linux on the iPhone via the ESP32 through the book 8088. Cute, right? And now we can browse the web. Let us go to the bbc.co.uk. Ah, yeah, that happens sometimes. Unfortunately, <laughs> what a demo. Unfortunately, sometimes it is believing that I am having UTF-8 and nothing works normally. Okay, somehow this really went badly. Oh, 
Okay, everything is working. Q. Yes, I want to quit. Clear. I'll have to fix this. I'll just reconnect. <laughs> Boy, is that terrible. Uh, have no idea what is causing it. Because some, some characters are intact. S-T-T-Y. Sane. I know what is causing it. Sometimes the ESP32 does such things. That's not good. But be prepared that you may face a wall like this. It's like matrix-like text if I press LS. <laughs> but, but it is not supposed to do that. So if I say top, these are my processes, right? You, you see it, it is doing something. It's just doing it terribly. Okay, out we are saying exit. For whatever reason, unfortunately, this got garbled. It's not going to be the end of the world, but I will need to restart everything. So the hotspot, let's turn on and off the hotspot. Allow others to join goes to off. The unfortunate navigator here just got its battery plugged out. Allow others to join goes to on, maximize compatibility goes to on, the hotspot is on. The board gets connected. Setup commencing. Nothing. Okay, once again, off. F10 to get rid of Connex. Connex. Okay. <laughs> ah, no crazy sausage this time. Very good. Connecting. Setup. Commencing. Now it should try again to reach the wireless. Are connecting to Wi-Fi suddenly you can talk in a civilized fashion, right? Oh, who would have thought? But I need apparently to restart the hotspot. Hotspot is turned off and on again. Finally connected, but no listener. Repeating the whole procedure, we are back in the ish shell, starting the Telnet server. Ah, the adventure is over. When we list things, they look pretty normally. Let's start then the Lynx browser and let's go with it to the BBC. BBC.com this time. Looking it up, etc., etc. And there we are. We have reached indeed the BBC. I can go there and like page down and you see there are Lots of news, most of which we do not wish to, to read. But nonetheless, we are having here a functional browser. <laughs> a functional browser on Linux. Because really, what you're seeing here, that is the iPhone's internal Linux environment. So that is the simple way of using the book 8088 as a terminal in order to connect to an iPhone. And if I now say exit, it's going to be funny because exit to where? The microcontroller doesn't have any outside environment. So exiting it is just going to lead eventually to its reboot, which it may or may not print here on this terminal. But that really ends the adventure. There, there is nothing further we can do from here. No matter what I do now, the microcontroller is not going to do a thing. So I'm now going to press F10 in order to exit Connex. Yeah, and that's it. I can now on the iPhone just simply from the control of these applications swipe up to terminate ish. So next time I start ish, it is starting afresh. The ESP32 I could easily disconnect from electricity, 
and the DOS computer I can switch off. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, today's adventure is over. To those of you who are going to be trying out to browse the web via the iPhones, I hope this is going to be helpful. Everyone is, of course, very welcome to join again on this channel. If you're not a subscriber yet, then please consider it. See you soon for further episodes of this. And have a great day. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Post dictum. Ha! Ah, such a forgetful person. I promised you the source code for the ESP32 serial to Wi Fi bridge. It is really everything you see in this screen. So we're talking of something of the spectacular length of what? 24 lines? 25 lines, yeah. So it's just including the Wi Fi. I'm defining SRL as the serial because I can then easily change it. Here goes the name of your iPhone. That is where your iPhone's password is going. CH is going to be the character we are reading. Then we are starting the serial port and we are telling the user that we are doing. Thereafter, we are connecting to the Wi-Fi. And if that doesn't work out, we're just retrying and retrying each second. Finally, when we are connected, we are telling so. And if we have not yet connected to the telnet environment, we are saying that there is no listener and we keep trying each second on port 8088 of the iPhone. Once we are connected comes the really funny, super simple part. If there is anything on the Wi-Fi, we are reading it and printing it on the serial port. If there is anything on the serial port, we are reading it and printing it on the Wi-Fi. And that's all. We're just looping that infinitely in this for loop without any parameters and the void loop part I left completely untreated. Finally down there there's just some advice what you might be trying out in your telnet daemon like ECL, Lisp, Lynx, VI or Nano.